Hello everyone and welcome back to another Flask tutorial. So in this video what I'm going to be doing is showing you something called template inheritance which is an extremely useful tool so you're not repeating HTML code or JavaScript or whatever it's going to be throughout your entire website. It essentially allows you to create kind of a base template that every other one of your templates will work off of and we'll talk about that. I'm also going to be showing you how we can add bootstrap to our website and just create a basic little nav bar. I just want to show you guys really, you know, simply how you can actually make your website look good. And then that way you guys can kind of go after this video, change some things up and understand how to actually style your website. Because throughout most of these videos, I'm not really going to be talking about front end development. Most of it's going to be functionality back end, talking about user authentication, forms, all those kind of things. And I just want to give you guys an idea of how you can actually make a decent front end without having to use some frameworks like React or you know angular or stuff like that all right so let's go ahead and get started now i just want to give you a basic example of what i mean by template inheritance now if we look at you know the bootstrap website which we're going to be using later in the video we can see here that this website kind of has a theme and we can kind of detect that theme by this nav bar up here that's you know a specific color it has some things on it and we know that when we click items on the nav bar depending on what we click obviously we're probably going to be directed to a page that looks similar with just slightly different content now it wouldn't really make sense for bootstrap or for any of these websites to keep writing the code to generate this nav bar on every single web page that they have because this is kind of something that's set it's going to stay the same for most of the pages and in fact there's probably some more other similar things like maybe you know the footer at the bottom of the website oh, i guess it doesn't have one so i can't show you um, that are going to stay the same so what should we do to you know accomplish not having to repeat this code well flask at least makes this really easy because we can actually inherit templates now what i'm going to do to illustrate this is just create a new template so i'm just going to create a new file i'm going to save this as base.html and this is going to represent the base template or kind of the base theme of my website it's going to store all of the html code that will persist throughout most or the entire website now in here i'm actually just going to copy all the html from index.html and put it directly inside here now i'm going to delete this from index.html and we'll start working with a few things here so since this is our base template, that means that we are not actually going to ever render this template. We're always just going to use this as something that, you know, the child templates, which will be, for example, index.html will inherit from. And if you're unfamiliar with inheritance, that essentially means, you know, use everything and then change a few small things or overwrite some functionality of, you know, the parent, which in this case is going to be the base.html. So the way that we can allow our child templates to change specific functionality of the base template is by adding something called blocks. Now you guys will understand this more as we get through, but just follow along for now. What I'm going to do is just create something called block and I'm going to put it inside the same tags we used before to write, you know, for loops and if statements inside our HTML code. I'm going to give this block a name by just typing the name directly after block. And then what I'm going to do is simply end the block by typing end block. So very similar syntax to what we've seen before. Now what this does is essentially say, okay, we're going to define a block. We're going to call it content. And this block, we will allow the child template to give us some content that we will fill in. So essentially what I can do now is I can go to this child template. I can inherit base.html. I can create this block and then I can tell, you know, this block where what content I want and then it will actually substitute it inside here for title and it will use that title when we render the template. So rather than talking about it, let's actually do it. So to extend a template, what we need to do at the very top of our template is type extends, not in all capitals, like this. And then in quotation marks, the name of that template. So in this case, it's going to be base.html. And it's important that these templates are in the same directory so that they can actually see each other. If they're not, then you'd have to do, you know, like folder slash base.html if that's inside an interior folder. Okay, so we're going to extend base.html. And now what I'm going to do is actually give some content for that block content. So this is the exact same as what we had in our base template, except this time I'm actually going to put some stuff in between these kind of blocks. So I'm going to say end block like that. So block content and block. And then inside here, I'm actually just going to put home page. Now, what this is going to do is very similar, just kind of like an HTML tag where this home page now will be replaced with whatever this block content is. And that will actually show now for us inside title. So very useful and, you know, can definitely save us a lot of time. And what I'm going to do is get rid of this content here. Um, and I'm actually just going to put something that just says, you know, Tim's website and this h1 tag i'm assuming is going to be shown on every single page no matter what 
So we'll leave that there as the H1 tag. But what I want to do is create another block and I'm going to call this, um, oops, and I've called this block content. Sorry, I'm going to call this block title. My apologies, guys, because I actually want to call my next block block content. <laughs> so we'll change the name of that. And then what I'm going to do is define another block. I'm going to call it block content, which will represent in our case, the content of the website or the content of the web page. So I'll do actually, I don't know why I copy that. And then we'll type end block. And now what I've done is define another block that we can, you know, overwrite, we can put some information into. So now from our child template, we'll write this block again. So we have block content. And then we will simply end the block. And now in between these two tags, I can put any HTML code I want. And that will actually be rendered to my base.html template whenever you know we have that popping up. So let's do another h1 tag and we'll just say you know test like that and we'll leave it at that for now. Okay, so let's go back to our actual python code now. This is the exact same that I had in the last video, so if you haven't seen that then you can check that out. And quick side note, I will be putting most of this code on my website and there will be links in the description to that. I'm going to make one minor change to this because someone did leave a comment and this is definitely going to be helpful for all of us in this app dot run. We can actually define something called debug equals true. So just a keyword argument here. And what this is actually going to do is allow us to not have to rerun the server every time we make a change because it will automatically be detecting those changes and updating the website for us. So I'm going to do that and make sure I save that. And then what I'm going to do is run Python tutorial three. You'll notice we get a few more um, kind of debug things popping up for us. And then what I'm going to do is just grab this URL. We'll go to a new web browser window, open that up. And there you go. We can see we get Tim's website and we get test. So that is kind of exactly what um, I wanted to, you know, <laughs> show you guys. That's how that works. We're extending this base template. We're adding our own, you know, test to that base template by putting that in the block content. And that is pretty much how this works. Now you might be like, well, this is kind of, you know, useless right now because all we're doing is just showing an H1 tag rather than doing all this extra work. Why wouldn't I just, you know, take this H1 tag and just write the, all this HTML and index.html? Well, like I was saying before, oftentimes we're going to have some more complex components and I'm actually going to show you how we can add a nav bar now and then how we can use kind of the base template. So all our other templates will have that nav bar on it. Okay, so now that that works, let's actually talk about adding bootstrap. So if you're unfamiliar with bootstrap, essentially what this is, is a kind of CSS um, framework, I want to say, for quickly kind of creating and styling your website. Now to add this is actually pretty easy. And what I'm going to do is just grab from the bootstrap website, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below, I'm going to look where it says CSS. And I'm going to copy this link right here. So there's actually something that says copy. So all of this. And again, this code will be on my website at some point. So if you miss that, you should be able to grab it. I'm going to take that CSS link and I'm going to paste that inside of my head tags of my website. In this case, the base.html template. Next, what I'm going to do is go to where it says JS here. I'm going to copy all of these scripts and I'm going to put them at the end of the body. So at the very end of the actual base template here. Now what this is going to do is allow us to use kind of a library of different classes and I guess like I I don't even know what you call them just a bunch of different kind of styling things from bootstrap to make our website website look nicer. <laughs> all right, so there we go. We have all of that added in and now we actually have bootstrap. And in case you're wondering how this works, this is on what I think is called a C a CDN, which essentially means we don't actually need to download any files because this is just going to grab the CSS code and the JavaScript code from the internet. So that's kind of how that works. Okay. So now that we have all that, what I'm actually going to do is show you how we can just grab, you know, a kind of a sidebar layout or a nav bar layout from this actual website. So what I'm going to do is literally just search nav bar on bootstrap here and I'll leave a link to this as well. What I'm going to do is just look for one that I like, you know, here's a nav bar. Um, here's a nav bar. There's a bunch of different nav bars that you can see. And this is what I typically do whenever I'm styling a website. I just take all this code for a nav bar, copy it and just put it on my website. There's a reason they have it here. So you can, you know, modify it, change it and also just use it. So what I'm going to do is take that code for the nav bar, copied it, and I'm just going to put it at the top of my body. Now I will fix this indentation because that kind of frustrates me when it's off. But now what I'm going to do is essentially I've added this to my base template. And now this means that any child template will automatically have this nav bar at the top of it. And if you don't believe me, let me show you. So actually let's go here 
and refresh. And now you can see we get this nice navbar popping up at the top of our website. We also get Tim's website and we get test, but you know, I can delete that each one tag because we probably don't want that everywhere. Now, if you wanted to change any of the things associated with the navbar, obviously all the codes here, so you can change them, but that's just what I wanted to show you in terms of how we can actually add bootstrap. Now, the reason this navbar is actually working properly is because well, we added bootstrap into the website, but if for some reason when you add this and it's not working or you know the styles looking different than this, then that probably means you didn't add bootstrap correctly. And you need to make sure that you add this link at the top of your head tag. So at the very beginning before everything else, and that you add these scripts for the JavaScript and the jQuery at the end of your body tags. So that is kind of all that I want to show you in terms of how to add bootstrap to your website, how to make a base template, how to make a child template that inherits that base template. And just note that you can actually create more child templates that inherit this base template. And if I want to show you a really quick example, um, I'll just do, you know, new dot HTML. And we'll just set up another page to you know show you that this actually does work. I'm not even going to put anything in here except this extends base dot HTML. I don't need to add those blocks if I don't want to. And then what I'm going to do is just create, you know, a new root. So we'll just copy this and we'll just call it slash like test or something like that. Okay. So slash test like that. Also, we can get rid of this content equals testing because obviously index no longer takes that content variable. So we don't need that. And here I'll just render new.html whenever we go to that slash test website or slash test page. And what is this? Oh, I need to call this a different name. My apologies. Let's get a mistake there. So let's run this now. Go to slash test. And now we can see that we get nothing on our screen except this navbar. And if I go back to the home page, you can see that we get test showing up. So that's kind of how that works. Pretty basic, pretty easy. That is a way to kind of style your website. I'm sure some of you guys know how to use bootstrap and you can obviously use, you know, different kind of frameworks for styling, but I personally like bootstrap. It's pretty easy. And there you are. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and let me know if you want to see any other stuff from this series in the future.